Hey guys, welcome back to another video on TJ's Tech. Today we're going to be building an all-black gaming PC with zero RGB that will be targeting 1440p or 2K resolution gaming. For my 165Hz 1440p monitor. I'm going to be taking you guys through the full build process so that you see how I go about building my PCs. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a total of how much I spent on this PC as well as play some games and see how well it runs. For the CPU, I went for the AMD Ryzen 5 5500, which went for 2200. It's a 6 core, 12 thread CPU. Ideally, I would have went for the Ryzen 5 5600 if it was a little bit cheaper, but I'm going to be gaming at 1440p, so even with something like a 3070 or 4060 TR, there should not be too much of a bottleneck at this resolution. Now let's slot the CPU into our motherboard. Our motherboard is the MSI B550 Pro. VDH Wi-Fi, which is a micro ATX motherboard with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It has a healthy amount of I.O. port, four DIMM slots for your RAM, two PCIe slots, and a nice looking black finish. I placed the motherboard on the box as you can see, so that we can start by prepping the motherboard for installation in the case, which we'll do later in this video. Next up is our RAM. This is the G-Skill Ribjaw 16GB RAM kit. It has no RGB lighting, just pure performance and a menacing glossy black look. I stole these for about 900 rands, which I think is an incredible price for a 16 gigabyte kit of 3200 mega transfer memory. When installing your RAM, open up the latches on each side of the DIMM slots you'll be using. In most cases, like I'm doing here, are the two channels furthest to the right. Then line up the RAM with the notches and push them in until they click. After the RAM, I like to install my SSDs next. For my SSD, I went for the Hikvision PCIe Gen 4 SSD and I was pretty excited to test out the speeds in launching Windows and launching games. Spoiler alert, if you have a Gen 3 SSD already, it's not significantly faster but it's still pretty fast. I'm going to be installing the SSD in the first PCIe slot because it's the only one with the heatsink and also it has a direct lane to the CPU which allows it to operate at its fastest. All you have to do here is remove the heatsink then inserting the tiny little SSD. Afterwards put the heatsink right back on there. To cool the CPU I went for this ID cooling tower cooler which looks gorgeous with the brushed metal finish on top and the compact shape and size. It's going to match our all black aesthetic perfectly. The cooler shouldn't have a problem cooling anything up to a CPU with a 150 watt TDP. However, if you want to replicate this build, feel free to use the stock cooler that comes with the CPU. It works just fine and you can save yourself some money. I had some trouble installing the tower cooler even though I've done this a couple times already. Most of the struggle was removing the pre-installed brackets on the motherboard, which are a pain if you don't have the right screwdriver. And that happens to be the case for me. My screwdrivers are way too small. However, the installation process of the CPU cooler cooler is pretty easy, just make sure you always read the instructions. Now once you've installed your CPU cooler, the motherboard is ready to be installed in the case. The case that I'm going to be using here is the Antec 1000D Lite case, which is a mid tower case. And yes, I know, in this channel I've only built in mid tower cases, but what can I say? They are mainstream and affordable. I mean look at this one for example. It's easy to build in, has plenty of airflow, and it also looks great. It comes with three pre-installed fans as well, which is a bonus. Installing the motherboard in the case is pretty simple. If your motherboard does not have an inbuilt I.O. shield, you're going to have to fit that in first. You should find it in the box that came with your motherboard. After you've, you fit it in the I.O. shield, line up the motherboard with the standoffs in the, in the case you're going to be using. Then screw down the motherboard with the included screws. In my experience, you usually have more screws than you need because some of them are located in the motherboard box while some of them are in the power supply. You can also use the ones that come with your CPU cooler box if you have some left over. Now, one once you've installed your motherboard in the case, you're 70% done with the build. Next up, I connected the case I.O. to the motherboard. Make use of your motherboard manual here because it differs by the type of motherboard you're using. Try not to force any connections into the motherboard like I did. I ended up damaging my USB 3.0 port. And now the two USB ports on the motherboard are not going to work anymore. Next up is the power supply. I got the Gamdius Kratos E1, which is a 600 watt power supply. It's not the greatest quality. You can probably tell by the ketchup and mustard cables, but it gets the job done. It's also the only component I have here with RGB, but I'm definitely not going to be using that, so I keep it off. PSU prices have been a little bit on the high side the past few months for some reason, so I chose to cheap out a little bit here. But this power supply will get the job done given our low power demands for this build. However, if I ever upgrade the GPU or CPU or both, I'm definitely going to upgrade the power supply as well. I also got some black 
extension cables from Fantex. These will keep us from having to look at those nasty ketchup and mustard cables from the PSU. If you're getting these extension cables as well, just be aware that they're 50 centimeters in length, which may be too long or too short depending on your case and whether or not you have a modular or non-modular power supply. And also these cables are pretty difficult to train. So shaping them for cable management is a nightmare, but once you have it done, they look amazing. Make sure you install the PSU with the fan facing down and when plugging in the extension cables, if you're gonna be doing that, of course. Make sure you distinguish between the CPU power cables and the PCIe power cables. The CPU power cables are split in the middle into four x four pins, while the GPU power cables are six x two pin. Now connect the 16 pin motherboard cable, then connect the eight pin CPU cable. The only one left will be for our GPU, which is up next. For the GPU, I went for the Almighty AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT, and this is the SFX Beaster Edition. This is a great 1440p card and it should be able to blow away those next gen consoles out of the water. I bought this GPU second hand from what I suspect was a miner. The GPU came at 4800 and the card was in good condition but it needed some serious cleaning. So I had to pull out some cotton swabs and a tiny bit of water and get to work. I don't recommend using water when cleaning uh, your GPU because it only promotes more rust. So I'd recommend you use isopropyl alcohol or some kind of vinegar. This was my first time doing this, so I just used water because I didn't have access to those. This took about 20 minutes because the thing was super dusty, but once I was done, it looked amazing. After cleaning up the GPU, I plugged it into my PC and the PC was ready to go after installing the power cables, of course. Now it's time for a boot test. All right, here's the finished build. It looks gorgeous, all black, no nonsense. Um, I'm not gonna pretend. <laughs> that I haven't booted the PC before. Uh, I did a test boot because my, my camera battery died. I already know that it boots up. Um, only problem is these are two USB ports here, the blue ones. They don't work because I messed up the USB 3 connection on the motherboard. So the pins are kind of screwed up. So that's never gonna work up until I replace that motherboard. Yeah, so I'll just put it up for you guys to show you that it works. You can't tell that it's on, but it's on. Awesome, there we go. So right now, I think I'll just um, turn on the XMP profile, um, install Windows, or maybe I should, actually, I think I'll, I'll install Windows first and then turn on the XMP profile. And um, yeah, I'll get back to you guys once I'm in my desktop. I think we should hire that in PC there. Oh, away from Single-handedly. Uh. What? <laughs> the whole squad, the whole squad! Yeah, I'm lagging. I'm lagging. I can't win. Knock another one, knock another one. He's heading here, he's heading here. Yes, it's two of them. Yeah, he repelled it. Nice. Oh! Ooh. Yeah, I'm dead. Come. There, 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 there. Nice. Got him. He's low, he's low. Just, just hit the ice, hit the ice. Knock him, knock him. Watch out! I knocked one, I knocked one. Knock one, knock one up here. Hmm? I found him. Oh. Nice one. Finish him up, bro. Shoot. What the? Ah, Kill him. Right, nice one, behind you. I'm creeping. I'll try to get stuck. No. Get in there. Nice. That was clean. Check this out. <laughs> check, check this cha-cha. Oof. Ooh, right over me. Oof. Ah. I just gave me 
Oh my god! Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> I'm crazy!